Okay, let's talk about thyroid storm. It's something we absolutely need to be ready for in healthcare. Definitely. We need a clear plan for quick understanding. It might be rare, but that mortality rate is high. Uh-huh. It happens in maybe 1% to 2% of people with hyperthyroidism. And the mortality, even when treated. Yeah, it's still concerningly high, somewhere between 8 and uh, 25%. Which really highlights why that immediate clinical diagnosis is so important. Exactly. You can't wait around for labs initially. The diagnosis is, well, it's clinical first. So what are we looking for right away? What are those key clinical signs? You're looking for a constellation, really. Fever is a big one. Altered mental status, definitely. And, you know, signs of major sympathetic overactivity. Tachycardia, hypertension, that sort of thing. Right, exactly. And there's a tool we use, the Birch and Wartofsky scoring system. It's pretty much the accepted standard. Okay, the Birch and Wartofsky score. How does that help us quantify things? Well, it gives you a number. If the score is 45 or more, that's highly suggestive of thyroid storm. You should probably act. And if it's low? A score under 25 makes it, well, much less likely. It helps to guide that immediate decision making. Right. So let's say the score is high or clinical suspicion is strong. What are the immediate management steps, mm -hmm. the pillars of treatment? There are basically four main areas to hit right away. First. Uh -huh general supportive care. Okay. Second, you need to block the peripheral effects of all that excess thyroid hormone. Makes sense. What else? Third, inhibit the synthesis, stop the thyroid from making new hormone. And fourth, inhibit the release of hormone that's already stored in the gland. Let's break those down. Supportive care first. What does that involve immediately? Okay. Fever control is key. Acetaminophen is what you want. Uh, definitely avoid salicylites, aspirin, and related drugs. They can actually make things worse. Good point. What about agitation? Benzodiazepines, they can be really helpful for managing agitation or anxiety. And hemodynamics, if they're unstable. Immediate intravenous fluids are usually necessary, but, and this is important, you have to watch them very closely for signs of high output heart failure. Too much fluid can be dangerous too. Got it. So moving to blocking those peripheral effects, that usually means beta blockers, right? Yes, beta blockers are central here. Propranolol is a common choice, maybe 40 to 80 milligrams orally every four to six hours. Is there an intravenous option if needed? Absolutely. Esmol is good for that. You'd give a loading dose, say 250 to 500 micrograms per kilogram intravenously, like right away. Then follow with an infusion, usually 50 to 100 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Okay. Now, how do we stop the thyroid from making more hormone? The synthesis inhibition. That's where the thionamides come in. Propylthiracil, or PTU, is often preferred initially because it also has some effect on peripheral conversion. The dose is pretty hefty, 500 to 1,000 milligrams orally to start, followed by 250 milligrams every four hours. Is there an alternative to PTU? Yes. Methamazole is the other main option, 20 milligrams orally every four to six hours. And then blocking the release of preformed hormone. Right. This is usually done about an hour after starting the thionamide. You use iodine solutions like supersaturated potassium iodide, often called SSKI, five drops by mouth every six hours. Why wait an hour? You want to block synthesis first so the thyroid doesn't just use the iodine to make even more hormone. Ah, okay. What about glucocorticoids? Yes, definitely. They reduce peripheral conversion of T4 to T3 and provide adrenal support. Hydrocortisone 100 milligrams intravenously every eight hours is common. Or you could use dexamethasone, maybe two milligrams intravenously every six hours. Any other medications that might play a role? Well, cholestermine can be considered mm. four grams orally, four times daily. It's a bile acid sequestrant that can bind thyroid hormone in the intestine and prevent reabsorption. And what if the patient has asthma? Beta blockers can be tricky there. That's a very important consideration. You might lean towards more cardioselective beta blockers like atenolol or metoprolol used cautiously. Or if beta blockers are just too risky, diltiazem, a calcium channel blocker, can be an alternative for rate control. Okay, so it's a multi-pronged attack, really. Supportive care, block effects, block synthesis, block release, and speed is critical. Absolutely. The key message is, if you suspect thyroid storm, you need to act swiftly and comprehensively. This has been a quick guide to those first crucial steps. Thinking about how quickly things need to happen. How does initiating these specific therapies rapidly truly impact mortality rates from what you've seen or understand? Mm.